right, everybody. Gonna get this match going. Fedor Gorst versus Vitaly Pastura. This is the hot seat match of the Tin Ball Mini Derb Open. Gonna be an awesome match. These guys are uh, very familiar with each other's game. Spent a lot of time on the road uh, this year and last year together. Fedor defeating Luis DeMarco. Round previous to arrive here. Cash over John Gabriel. Or, sorry, Vitaly over Cash earlier and then John Gabriel. Fedor with the first break. His 10 ball break, one of the things he's known most for. Gets the ball down in the side pocket here, but uh, wasn't able to keep his cue ball. Got a kiss up table for the, the one in the corner, so. That'll be a defensive shot to open up here. Fetters had a lot of experience on this table. Not only in this event, he's played two challenge matches here as well. One against Scott Frost in one pocket earlier last year. And then again against Carlo Beato. Winning both of those matches handily, as Feder tends to do. He's uh, pushed out here to begin. Vitaly will have the option to take this shot on or give it back. Hard to pass something like this back to somebody like Feder, though. I think you'll see him shoot it.
had an early mistake there from Federer. Had tough shape and uh, it's gonna bring Vitaly in for a good opportunity to draw first blood. It's a race to nine here on the winner's side. draw from Vitaly there. Routine Timball to take the first rack against Fedor Gorst. This is the hot seat match for the mini derb open Timball. Vitaly takes a look at the rack here. We'll show you uh, friends of ours. Omega Billiards has the D-Gen Dungeon coming up here at Derby City Classic. That starts this coming Friday. Caesars Southern Indiana, one of the biggest tournaments of the year. If you're headed out that way, a lot of great action coming in their uh, feature room. Presented by Omega. Omega Billiards TV. Definitely want to check that out. A lot of high stakes matches Heard some rumors of some really good ones you're not going to want to miss. Meanwhile, we'll go back to the action here. Vitaly Pastura ahead 1-0 to zero over Federer. We'll get our scoreboard updated. Good break, but was uh, unable to get the ball down. Federer has an open shot at the one with the, uh, the twos tied up to the three close by. Unfortunately, doesn't have a natural angle into those balls. Wipes its feet, but it does go down. Federer unfortunately catches that four ball. 
pretty thick and uh, locks himself up dead on the six. So a couple mistakes early on here from Federer. It's actually uh, sort of the way his match started against Louis DeMarco. Louis was able to get ahead four to two at one point before Federer caught a gear. Ended up putting a four pack together to close that match out in nine to four. Back with you here. Looks like Vitaly was able to get to the two ball and lock Federer up. That'll be a tough shot here. Uh, not only jacked up over the nine, but using a bridge. Only real option is a one rail escape with a wide open, well not wide open, but fairly open bottom end of the table and both balls going in the direction uh, together. It's, it's tough to have something good happen here. Not impossible, but. taking uh, extra caution just to make sure he gets that bridge as close to the ball as he can. Something uh, you should always do anytime you've got a bridge over a ball like that. You want to be as close to the object ball as you can. Go over around to the side and go ahead and place your bridge first and then your cue. Just gives you the maximum uh, amount of reach. That's that's a really good hit. Um, you know, he's going to sell out a shot here. It did get a little funny, a little thin, but uh, not much else you can do in that position. Anything, Anything's always better than ball in hand, of course. I don't think you would see Vitaly opt for a bank shot here. A lot of the European players um, not big on banking if there's a a defense in in play they'd rather do that unless it's just a dead cross side or something of that nature versus someone like Skyler or Billy Thorpe you might see just fire this ball in 100 miles an hour and draw back for the three if Vitaly doesn't like taking the cut on which is certainly still an option you might see him bank this to the bottom rail and take his cue ball up table it's really all about whether or not he feels like he can fall on this three ball or not Hmm. 
He does cut the ball in and, and use the seven to hold for the three. Certainly not a hanger this shot, and the, the seven ties up with the four. I don't believe, we can take a look at the overhead here, I don't think that that's going to be wired to the side pocket, and it's it's not. So with the eight ball blocking the, the bottom left corner, as we look, I'm, I'm not sure what options Vitaly has here. He may may even elect to play defense on the three since there's nothing good on the four. Otherwise, he may try to pocket the three and then play defense on the four. Wow, what a great shot. He's able to take his cue ball into the four and open that up, but the seven ball stopping it right there. He's going to have to slice this in the side pocket. We'll take another uh, quick look at that one. That was a really good cue ball control there to dodge the nine ball, come straight back into the four. Good confident shot there, shooting the four into the side. Drawing his cue belt, two rails and back out for the five in the side. Same pocket. Alrighty, Kyle Ferguson here at Rail Yard Billiards back in the booth. Sorry, I'm playing a little bit of uh, dual duty here, doing the uh, tournament director on the nine ball and commentating on the stream, popping in and out, but uh, 
Vitaly making another good out here to take a 2-0 lead over Fedor Gorst. Big break there from Vitaly. It's two balls down into the side and the one ball's gonna pop up for a shot. real question here is the uh, the eight ball especially where the nine is I'll take a quick look at the overhead not sure how much room the 10 ball really cuts off a lot of what uh, would be available to shoot that in the side so good thing for Vitaly is the seven balls close by he can land on an angle to manufacture the eight ball maybe knock the 10 away open up the eight for the side Good stroke there. Just doesn't want to land too straight. The five's all the way at the other end of the table. I think he has enough angle. He might have to force around a little bit. Take a look at this from the side view. And it's a little bit straight. Might see him draw back with a bunch of low left. Opposite of what you might think. The ball's going backwards. Try to spin down table for the five. Great stroke there. Europe number one. Yes, this is the, the new stream channel. Sorry, the original one we posted had a misconfiguration on it. It was causing a lot of lag. It was a simple user error on my part. Apologies, but uh, we'll have the stream here on this channel for the rest of the evening. we we'll have the uh, hot seat match you're watching now. Right after this, we're going to do the bank ring game. A lot of really good players in that one. Don't want to miss it. Skyler Woodward, Billy Thorpe, Scott Frost, Louis DeMarco, Fedor Gorst. To name a few, a couple local players that uh, bank them pretty good these days. Vitaly uh, off the five wasn't able to get an angle on the seven to open up this eight ball. It does not pass the nine unless the table rolls off and then uh, 
that's the case, you'll see me out there with the level shortly after this match. But uh, <laughs> I'm in the booth looking great right down the line. I think you're going to see Vitaly just shoot this eight ball away and freeze right up on the ten. That's a good shot there. Puts Fetter in a pretty tough spot. And uh, Vitaly looking good to take a three to zero lead if he can clean the rest of these balls up. Of course, this is not the guy you want coming to the table, regardless of what position you put him in. If uh, you're looking to win matches, Fedor Gorst had a lot of highlight shots over the last few years that we've watched on Facebook and YouTube. Let's see what he can come with here. He's in a pretty tough spot. Wide open table at the end of the rack and frozen to another ball. Good shot from Feder. He took a uh, took an honest swing at it in the, the bottom right, and from where he was, that's about all you could really ask for. He did leave a bank on the eight ball, and it does go by the ten. If the ten was just a little bit higher, it would have made that pocket really big. But we talked about it earlier. I'm not sure if Vitaly will take this on or not. A lot of the European players, not all, but some, tend to pass the bank shot a little bit more often than the, um, the Americans do playing bank more often. It's a little bit more popular of a game here. Of course, the Derby City Classic about to start. That's one of the uh, featured events of that tournament. Nine ball bank. And really what got a lot of the Europeans starting to play bank pool. As it was a requirement to play in that in order to win the all around, which is a $20,000 payday. So a good example there. Vitaly's just going to bump the eight ball up table and lay the cue ball behind the nine, which he does so perfectly. And I believe he's uh, done so well enough to even take the one rail escape out of the picture for Fedor. You can get a look right behind this shot. You can just see exactly what Fedor's up against. to uh, kick three rails. This is his uh, best chance to hit this eight ball. You see him just sizing up where he wants to come off of that second rail to get there. view as he looks over this. Uh, you can see just how little of the rail, the bottom rail he has to play with. Definitely in a really tough spot here. Vitaly's done a good job of maintaining control of the table from a couple early mistakes by Fedor. Yeah, and it's just, it was tough. Fetter says, I uh, i don't want to see anymore. It's going to be a 3-0 to zero lead. Vitaly over Fedor Gorst. This is the hot seat match here at the Mini Derb Open in Louisville, Kentucky at Rail Yard Billiards. A new pool room that opened uh, this past May, so not quite a year yet. It's our uh, first crack at this event. It's been uh, really good so far. Really happy with the turnout. and uh, We've got $15,000 added to all of the events in total. We're about 20 miles from the casino where Derby City Classic is held, so we've created this event as a, a good warm-up event. Look forward to growing this over the years. The 10-ball, 9-ball bar box, and the 9-ball bank will be a uh, bank ring game provided as a free stream. 
We had a pay-per-view stream on the One Pocket, which finished up last night. Fedor Gorse, the champion there, and Scott Frost taking second. Tony Chohan in third. The uh, pay-per-view will continue tomorrow with a fantastic match between John Mora and Tyler Steyer, both in the building today getting warmed up. Tyler here with his coach, Johan Rusank, pretty much the entire day. Those two uh, matched up right after the Moscone Cup this past December. John was the uh, the winner there by just one or two games. Pretty close match, and uh, they decided to run it back. There is over $80,000 that has been posted in the middle of that one. Both players really liking their end of it, apparently, and just makes for good uh, viewing for us. So make sure you don't miss that. You can get your pass at railyardbilliards.com. Just 19 bucks for all three days. You don't want to miss it. Meanwhile, back to the action here. Look at our scoreboard updated. Vitali breaking off in the fourth rack ahead, three to zero. Seems to have uh, found the break a little bit, as long as this four ball doesn't ruin his day. Looks like it's going to try to, and it does. The uh, last break he had was pretty successful and also able to get the ball down in the side pocket here, but the four ball unfortunately rolled up last minute. So we're probably going to see a push from Vitaly here. Mic check. Uh, we have eight nine-foot tables here at Rail Yard. They are all with four and a quarter inch pockets. We have 22 diamond bar boxes. It's a big building uh, spread out over about 40,000 square feet. We have three bars. Uh, one of them is an outdoor bar, so it's a little cold in Louisville right now. Just two of them active, but uh, plenty to keep you entertained nonetheless. Full sports bar. About 27 or so TVs. I've kind of lost count at this point. It's a great environment. Uh, make sure you come check it out if you're in the area. If you're coming in for Derby City, like I said, just about a 15-20 minute drive from the casino. Vitaly having a look to see if he's left that one rail escape for Fedor. We're going to take a look at the overhead here. It's, it's definitely close. I think if he has that one railer, you'll see him uh, call the 10 ball just in case. This is call shot. And the 10 ball early does count in this event. It does not count in the 9 ball. That play, being played on bar boxes felt like that was the uh, better way to go with that event. 9 ball early will just be spotted and the uh, player can continue shooting from there. Fetter's able to make a good hit, uh, but Vitaly's going to be able to see this two ball. Try to maintain control of the table, which he's done really well so far. A couple of early mistakes from Fetter. Vitaly cap capitalized, and uh, even when he wasn't able to pocket the ball, he was able to keep Fetter sitting in his chair or uh, kicking at extremely difficult shots. So kind of what you have to do with a guy like Fetter. You definitely don't want to get him at the table breaking. Probably one of the best 10-ball breaks in the world. Chris Guy. Can't find anyone to find it to play him. Oh, uh, Chris Gentile, I'm guessing that you're uh, you're talking about. Yeah, Chris can get some action. You know, he just needs to come down and match up. We can. I've told him, and I think he knows we can get him get him a game or three. Chris, good guy. We uh, 
We have some fun banter on Facebook. Always enjoy his company. He's been down. He's been here a few times. Played in a couple of events. Two valley tables where you live. Yeah. Just sounds like you've got a good market to open a new pool room, uh, Europe number one. I can definitely get you the hookup on some diamond tables. Of course, they uh, stay busy themselves. I think the last I heard, uh, new diamond tables maybe uh, uh, six months or, or long, a little longer to, to get a new one made. But definitely, in my opinion, the best table out there. Not just saying that because they're a sponsor, but uh, just all around the most solid and uh, best playing table there is. Of course, uh, Diamond is local to this area, so we're a little bit fortunate. We have them uh, all around town. But Louisville was kind of interesting. While uh, Federal Gorse takes advantage here and, and has a chance to put put a beat on his side, you know, Diamond is made here in Louisville, but uh, the, the reason Rail Yard came about, we, we really didn't have anywhere to play on nine-foot tables uh, probably the last five years or so. You know, the kind of a similar story. I know in a lot of different areas, the... Traditional pool rooms had all kind of closed down. The ones that were, uh, you know, older style pool rooms, nothing but nine foot tables, but also that's all they had in the building. Uh, the last one here in Louisville was Bank Shot. It closed down about five years ago. It actually got to the point where, uh, you know, there was maybe one bar that had one or two nine footers, you know, and uh, no, certainly nowhere that you could play events on them. And just not really well maintained. It was just a place that happened to have a nine foot table. And so, uh, with there being nowhere for anywhere to play, anybody to play, uh, there was a group of us, myself and uh, Greg Sullivan with Diamond Billiards, the Sword Brothers, among others, that uh, got together, found a little room for cheap in Indiana, and opened up a private club just so we could have somewhere to play. I've been going there for the last uh, three or four years, and uh, myself and my brother and a good friend of mine uh, a couple of years ago started putting together a plan to open a new room, and uh, long story short, we ended up here at uh, Rail Yard Billiards. We've got eight nine-foot tables. We're excited to bring the uh, big table action back to Louisville. It's been a really fun journey so far, and appreciate everybody's support. It makes uh, makes all this possible. Meanwhile, Fedor uh, finally able to put the. Uh, scoreboard in action for him and it is three to one he trails against Vitaly this is the hot seat matchup in the mini derb open Just as I uh, praise Fedor's break, he comes up dry here. Just kind of struggling to get going in this match against Vitaly. Looks like Vitaly's going to push to the top corner here. Not sure if he left a piece of it, if he was pushing for a kick shot. Uh, Federer can definitely see a piece of this one ball, so I don't think uh, Vitaly's going to be getting it back.
In any case, Federer is going to kick behind the ball. He's called it down in the bottom left corner as we look. He does uh, accidentally pocket the two ball. The rules that we're playing here, Vitaly has the option to shoot the ball as it lays or he could give the shot back to Feder since it was a ball that was not called pocketed. to play safe there and I believe he did get Federer on the six pretty snug almost creeped out the cue ball did but uh, ended up pumping the brakes right at the last minute so you can see just how uh, how the balls lay there Federer's looking to Massé since he uh, only has to go around just the edge of this six ball. Called the one in the side pocket. Good shot there from Vitaly. It was uh, super thin to the side, so it was always going to be hard to control his cue ball exactly. He's come up with another really thin shot in the side. I'm not sure if he'll even take this one on. Especially uh, being hampered by the four ball slightly. Just uh, lay down behind the 6-5. It's a good containing shot. Federer won't have any trouble hitting this ball. It doesn't matter what happens after that. He's uh, actually electing to go for the short cue. One of the best in the world with it. Wouldn't uh, be too far-fetched to see Federer make this ball. close to doing so. We are playing on four and a quarter inch pockets so there's not much leeway here. You do have to hit the hole. The cloth was changed a few weeks ago but uh, this this TV table has definitely seen a lot of play since then so there's not any kind of slide and we've had some rain here the last few days. So uh, definitely a tough table. 
We've seen a lot of balls rattled on here. Another jump at it from Fedor. But, uh, so far the story of this match is Vitaly. He's been able to control things pretty well. The exception of a good out made by Fedor last rack to get on the board for the first time. Vitaly's kind of had the open shots throughout this match. And uh, kind of kept the, kept the gauntlet down on Fedor as far as safeties go. Kicks and jumps for the most part. Of course, that's what you have to do with uh, somebody like Fedor Gorst. Can't give them too much room to play. Luis DeMarco found that out in the last match. Uh, the match Fedor played to get here, Luis was ahead 4-2. He was uh, playing, playing pretty good, really played a pretty good match, but one mistake, and uh, it went from 4-2 to 9-4 to to Fedor in about the blink of an eye. Vitaly laying down a good shot there. Excellent speed control. It really seems to have a good uh, good feel for the table. We've heard all week that this table's playing quick. Just the conditions that are here in the room. And uh, you know, that's what good players do. They, they adjust to the conditions a little bit better, a little bit faster than others.
Richard, Danny Alexander on table six. Table seven, Tim Richard, Luis Gonzalez. Tim Richard and Luis Gonzalez on table seven.
All right, everybody. Uh, Kyle Ferguson back in the booth with you here. Sorry I had to step out for uh, nine ball bracket updates. A break off from Vitali comes up dry here. I'll get our scoreboard updated. We're sitting at four apiece. It is 4-4, uh, at least that is the scoreboard that Fedor just updated uh, right behind the table out of the camera's view. Just tuning in, this is the hot seat match for the 10 ball event here at the Mini Derb Open. We're in Louisville, Kentucky at Rail Yard Billiards, about uh, 20 miles from where the Derby City Classic is held every year. We've uh, started this event as a little Derby City warm up. Pretty good turnout and uh, happy with the, the first year. I think it's only going to grow from here. Had a one pocket division which finished last night that uh, was won by Fedor Gorst defeating Scott Frost in the finals. Tony Chohan taking third place. You're watching the 10 ball open division and uh, we also started a nine ball bar box event earlier today that's running. We'll also have a nine ball bank ring game. And on Monday, we have John Mora versus Tyler Steyer. Big money match, $80,000 posted in the middle. That is a race to 75, 10 ball over three days. You definitely do not want to miss that one. We have a pay-per-view stream for that available at railyardbilliards.com. Make sure you get your passes. Only $19 for all three days of the action. John and Tyler recently played in Las Vegas. John was the winner there by uh, just one or two games. Very close match, and uh, they decided they wanted to run it back and bet even more, so that's what we're going to do. Fetter's flag, you know, I <laughs> it was 
I'm wondering that myself when I put these players in. Uh, we're using the uh, digital pool platform. It was an easy way for us to get the scoreboard up and uh, stream started here. And for some reason, Federer wouldn't pop up on there with his native flag. So only Vitaly gets a flag in this one. It's our first stream. You know, we're figuring it out. Appreciate y'all hanging in there with us. First bigger stream anyways. We stream a lot of matches here at Rail Yard. Make sure you like and uh, follow our page on Facebook. A lot of uh, different uh, action matches that pop up. Federer was actually playing a local Mike Brown here not too long ago, a month or so. Meanwhile, in this match, uh, Fetters off to the races, has a pretty routine out to take a one-game lead here. Been a close match ever since Fetter got back in it. Uh, Vitaly started out hot, ahead 3-0 to zero before Fetter won his first game. Neither players really seemed to get uh, settled in. Federer especially. Vitaly was looking pretty strong at the beginning, but uh, a little bit back and forth since then. Nonetheless, Federer will uh, close that one out for a 5-4 lead. This is a race to nine, the hot seat match. Final two on the winner's side. The one loss side, we have Louis DeMarco and... Mietzko Fortunski playing on one of the outside tables for a chance to meet John Gabriel on that side of the bracket. And then the winner of that match will play the loser here. So we're getting down to the final, uh, what is that, final five that are in the tournament now? Fedor to break. Earlier in this match, he was uh, struggling to get the normal Fedor pop going with the balls on the side, the, the one over the corner. Still missing the, uh, the side balls a little high here. The three ball just hangs, so uh, good opportunity here. Wide open table and a shot at the one on the side for Vitali. Yeah, very good chance to level this back up at 5-5. Five, five. Federer trying to will that three ball in the pocket, but it does not fall, so.
Once again, a chance for Vitaly here. Kind of surprised at the speed he played that shot. Ended up working out with a bump on the 10. And it uh, ended up making it easier to go from the four to the five ball. That's uh, probably the key shot to this rack. Wants to get an angle on the four where he can go side rail, side rail to the five. Had a hard time kind of staying in line in this rack here. I'm not sure if uh, maybe just getting a little fatigued. Been a long week of play here in uh, Louisville at Rail Yard. Federer and Vitaly playing uh, Turning Stone just before this. And of course they'll be at the Derby City Classic right after. So a lot of pool for these two. see a, a good stroke from Vitaly here to pull back on the five. He's got a little bit of angle the wrong way too so could possibly be drawing between the side pocket and nine ball depending on uh, which side of the pocket the four ball goes into. Yeah, he went uh, all the way to the left side of the pocket, created a lot of angle off that draw, and pulled himself over behind the eight ball. It was a good hit from Vitaly. Uh, it was always hard for something terribly well to work out for him, just the direction the balls were moving. He uh, fortunately only left a bank, but uh, Federal shoot this as a two-way. Play down close to the eight ball, and if it misses, has coverage there or is straight in on the six. Well executed. Seeing a good path to the five, Vitaly was trying to put that six ball over on the rail with the eight, but uh, well short of pace. Seems to have uh, fallen in a little bit of a lull with the game. Started out pretty strong, but 
course, when the, the rabbit has the gun, Fetters started playing a little bit better. Tends to tighten up that back arm a little bit. extension and follow through from Federer. It's always uh, so fun to watch how he plays this game. Just so consistent. Federer spent a lot of time here in this room playing. Fortunate to have him uh, close by. He is a sponsored rail yard player. hand Fedor does what he does and uh, makes a pretty routine out here so looking to take a 6-4 lead over Vitaly after uh, Vitaly had a couple early chances to, to control and run out this rack just wasn't able to get there and there it is 6-4 Fedor Gorst over Vitaly Pastura these up. We'll take a look at uh, John Mora versus Tyler Steyer. This flyer was made before we had uh, 10,000 more on each side come up. There's over 80,000 posted in the middle so far. This starts tomorrow, Monday at 3 p.m. Eastern. Get your pay-per-view stream at railyardbilliards.com. Only $19 for all three days. Race to 75. It's going to be an awesome match you don't want to miss. Tyler and John recently matching up in Las Vegas right after the Moscone Cup. John winning that one, and they uh, decided they wanted to run it back. Doing that here at Rail Yard. Going to be an awesome match for sure. Much better break there from Fetter. Seems to have uh, figured out the speed maybe. Wasn't happy with his cue ball, but uh, nonetheless still ended up with a shot on the one ball in the corner. It's pretty routine out here. So sort of what happened with this match against Luis DeMarco right before this. Louis uh, started out, was actually ahead 4-2 to two against Federer. Uh, Federer was struggling with the break a little bit and just couldn't get anything going. But just like in this match, once he did, uh, that was kind of the end of that. Turning it from 4-2 to two to 9-4 to four rather quickly. Louis still fighting back on the one loss side. He's playing Mietzko Fortunski currently on the outside table. Good player from Poland. Good shot from Federer there, just playing underneath the five ball where the nine ball sat. Uh, no reason to even bring that into play. He's got just enough angle. I think he can pop this, uh, you know, kind of a pop stun stroke to get the cue ball off the rail. And it looks like uh, with the angle he has, he is going to follow forward instead for the six on the side. I like that. We are playing on four and a quarter inch pockets. You don't really want to have to pop balls into the pocket uh, here unless it's absolutely necessary. Not a lot of room for error. 
every table here at Rail Yard, uh, as far as the nine footers goes, is four and a quarter inch pockets. Ten ball. Fedor Gorse takes a seven to four lead over Vitali Pastura. This is the hot seat matchup here at Rail Yard Billiards in Louisville, Kentucky. Mini Derb open. Take a look at our sponsors here. We really appreciate uh, none of this is possible without them, of course. Burning Barrel, popular skill game here at Rail Yard. Diamond Billiard Products, Q Tech, Jam Up Apparel, Diamond Billiard and uh, Johnny Brunk Printing Services, as well as Michelle Griffin, local, local realtor here if you're in the area. One of the best there is, big supporter of local pool. Take a look as uh, Fetter breaks. Rack number 12 leading seven to four. It's a big pop there. The five ball nearly drops, but uh, just a little bit high. Does uh, get the shot he was looking for at the one in the corner, but unfortunately, without a ball down, that's going to be an opportunity for Vitali. A rack that he really needs. He does not want Federer going to the hill eight to four ahead, so really needs to bear down and get this down and uh, try to put a good break and pull within one. Just having a look to see what a, uh, a two rail path might look like from this two ball. Trying to get over to the opposite rail for the three. It's really kind of the, the key shot here for the rack. It's going to have to pull back above the eight. Now it goes between the eight ten instead. A good shot there, good speed control. And once you fall in the four, uh, the, the rest of the rack really gets pretty routine from there. So. Has a good angle to get there. Kind of got through the tough part. Relatively speaking, of course, still has to make the shots. Nothing, nothing to give me in this game. Thank you. 
All right, folks. Vitaly made a, a good out there to uh, pull back within two. Seven to five is our score. I'll get updated. We have a player break. Got a couple things I need to do on uh, the nine ball bracket to get it moving along, and I'll be uh, right back in the booth with you here shortly. In the meantime, uh, enjoy the break, and we'll get the action going soon.
Back in the booth here with you, Vitaly. One 10 ball away from pulling into one game, which is exactly what he needed. Put a little bit more pressure on Fedor's side. 7-6 to six is the score. Just tuning in, this is the hot seat match for the Mini Derb Open here in Louisville, Kentucky at Rail Yard Billiards. We have a one loss side matchup. I got a score update for you on that. Louis DeMarco playing Mietzko Fortunski. Mietzko leading four to three. A close match there. It is a race to seven on the one loss side, nine on the winners. The winner of that match will play John Gabriel. Loser finishing in fourth place, and then the winner of that match will play the loser of this match for third. Rack number 14, Vitaly to break off. Both of these guys had a little bit inconsistent results. They've hit some good breaks, and they've had a couple dry breaks each as well. Neither one able to kind of find that sweet spot on the speed and coming up with a shot on the one. Big pop from Vitaly there. And the uh, cue ball was good. It does get kissed. And they end up behind the seven, unfortunately. Really kind of a bad roll as well as he hit those balls. One ball dressed up nicely in front of the corner pocket. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate the call out there. A 
definitely appreciate you all uh, liking and following along as well as on Facebook. We have a lot of great content we plan to bring this year. Mini Derb here is kind of the kickoff of the year for us. Have uh, John Mora and Tyler Steyer kicking off tomorrow. Get your uh, pass to view that at railyardbilliards.com. Have some other uh, premier matches as well as uh, a lot of free content we post on our Facebook and here on YouTube. Plan to do a lot more this year. It's a new room that opened this past year. Uh, oh, seven, eight months ago, whenever May is when we opened, end of May. Vitaly pushing to a jump shot here. I think you might see Feder take this on. He's one of the best with a short cue. One ball is readily available and uh, really just needs to follow forward one rail a little bit to come up with a shot on the two. So really kind of the key to this rack is going to be the three ball where it sits blocked by the six in the top left. Don't, don't want to be shooting combinations on this table unless you absolutely have to. We're playing a four and a quarter inch pocket. Had some rain here over the last uh, few days, a little bit higher humidity and can make it tough to get the balls to find gravity for sure. We've, we've seen a fair share of them hung up here on this TV table. And every table we have at Rail Yard is four and a quarter inch pocket. We have eight of the nine footers. We also have 22 bar boxes, standard pocket size on those. If you're uh, coming in town for the Derby City Classic, make sure you stop by and hang out with us for a little bit. We're just about a 15, 20 minute drive from the casino where Derby's held. Better elected not to shoot the uh, the jump shot, gave it back to Vitaly, and Vitaly knocks it down. So great shot there. But, uh, as I said, really the whole key to this rack is going to be getting on that three ball. You weren't able to really play shape on the two with a jump cue as precisely as you'd like to. It's kind of tough to get above the three from where he is. He's having a look at uh, swinging all the way around the table, but... You know, man, it takes such a big stroke to get there. Nonetheless, I don't see very many other options, so I think he might take this on. How do you hit it? Smooth and powerful stroke all the way around the table. So he's going to have a shot at this three down and uh, pop one rail out for the four ball. The rest of it gets pretty routine from there. So Vitaly, good chance to tie this match up. Great shot there, smooth stroke. Cue ball out in the center of the table, so Vitaly, big favorite to uh, to tie us up here. These, uh, both of these players have had a decent amount of experience on this table. Uh, Vitaly's been here in a couple different action matches we've had, smaller ones. Fedor playing a couple big matches here against uh, Scott Frost as well as Carlo Beato earlier last year. I've had the distinct pleasure of being beaten by Vitaly on this table a couple times. Always fun. Good shot there, stretched across the tables. Just a little bit funny to cue, but uh, 
hit it well, and he's got a good shot on the seven. Probably just stun forward a little bit, make sure he gets a... Well, he can do one of two things. He can stun forward a little bit to where he's got a little bit of a back cut on the eight ball to uh, shoot the nine in the bottom left as we look, or he could draw straight back for the eight in the side. Nine does not pass the ten ball. Looks to come back for the eight ball on the side. Shot there from Vitaly playing the angle around the uh, the nine ten. See, he sets up to the shot very consistently every time. Sort of a uh, Mika imminent ish. Can't talk. Uh, where he puts the cue in front of him and kind of sets his body down on that line. It's a good consistent way to uh, set up the same way every time. Seven to seven, all tied up, our score. Oh, Fred Babcock in the uh, chat, good to see you here, Fred. Good player from Indianapolis. Got a great match here. This is the hot seat match for the Mini Derb 10 ball open in Louisville, Kentucky at Rail Yard Billiards. Starting tomorrow, we have John Mora versus Tyler Steyer. This flyer was made uh, before recent betting updates. $10,000 more on each side. There's actually $80,000 posted in the middle. And I want to definitely check that out. We start tomorrow at 3 p.m. You can get your stream pass at railyardbilliards.com. $19 for all three days. There's some awesome action between these guys. They've been here practicing the last few days all day. Each one of them uh, ready to go to battle.
Alright, it's back in the booth here. Better with a chance to get on the hill first, it looks like. Aaron Ferguson, remind me who's in the bank ring game. That's a good question. Let me see. I don't have the list in front of me. I think we have around eight or nine players. And, uh, let's see. John Gabriel, a couple local players, Earl Age, Jim Berryman, Kevin Nichols. Um, we have Skylar Woodward, Billy Thorpe, Louis DeMarco. Um, Scott Frost uh, ended up dropping out. He's not playing anymore. But yeah, overall... Pretty pretty solid field. It'll be a really fun one, that's for sure. Uh, Suad Kantarovic, good player out of uh, Massachusetts, is here to play in that. Meanwhile, back at the action table here, uh, Fedor Gorst. Running out to get to the hill first. Eight to seven is the score, so Federer will have a chance to break and win this match. Of course, uh, neither player really been terribly consistent on the break this match, which is a little bit surprising with the template rack, but uh, for one reason or another, had a couple good and a couple dry breaks, each player. Rack 16, Fedor Gorst. Does manage to get the ball on the side down. Is the five ball going to play nice? It is not. Just a little bit uh, a little bit tough. The break has been uh, throughout this match for both players. I'm going to look at the overhead here. You can see uh, the five ball is dead in the way. I think we'll see a push from Fedor on this one. Fetter pushing down table here. You really hate to put somebody like Fetter back, back in. Uh, I think Vitaly's going to have a crack at this. He can play off the right side of the one ball, take his cue ball two rails down. A lot of uh, coverage down here at the bottom of the table. Probably his best option. I'm a little bit surprised that this is where the push was to. I thought maybe to a jump shot where the two ball is. Um, make it a little bit tough to play shape, but... Also pretty difficult to argue with the choices of someone like Fedor Gorst. Vitaly's unable to get hidden here, but he does push the one in front of the three, so nothing offensive from Fedor, uh, I don't believe. Matt Bell, yes, we are going to stream the Bank Ring game that will be available.
two rails with the one ball to the top with uh, from Fetter and cue ball down. I, I believe he's done good to get behind the six here. He had three balls, the cue ball uh, stopping just in time. Three balls to get behind at the bottom. We'll take a look at the overhead and see if Vitaly has a way to get around the six. He might have an edge on this one. If not, just a slight mass A would get there. He's having a look now to see uh, what's going to happen after making contact. Where he wants to uh, create separation between these balls. He'd like to be able to get his cue ball back down table, but the way he's going to be hitting this one ball, he's always going to be pushing it towards the corner pocket, so definitely needs to find coverage with the cue here. Unless he can masse around this six enough to bank the one ball straight down table. But the, uh, the double kiss is looming with that shot as close to the rail that the one is. And he, uh, he goes ahead and calls the one. He's, uh, I think, maybe looking at a rail first shot here. I, I kind of like that shot. So the one ball is off the rail just a little bit. You play uh, rail first, you have a chance at making the ball, and if you miss it to the thick side, or even thin enough to two rail it, the, the one ball will go back towards the center of the table. Your cue ball is always going to be tracking back down, down table, so really more of a speed control shot here. Wants to make sure to maintain distance between these balls. Yeah, just caught the one a little bit thick, a little bit thicker than what he would have wanted. So it banks all the way across the table, and the cue ball stops in the middle of the table. So uh, golden opportunity here for Fedor Gorse to close this match out. And uh, sitting in your chair hoping that Fedor makes a mistake is not a position anybody wants to be in. Two rails between the 9-5. Good opening shot there for Fetter. I really don't see very much trouble here. Um, immediately goes for his extension. He'll have a, a reach at this, but it won't be any issue at all. Just needs to maintain angle on the three ball so that he can pop out for the four. It goes by the six easily to drive a truck through that gap. Definitely maintains all the angle he needs, maybe even a little further than what he was uh, looking for, but not any kind of trouble at all. If he doesn't like uh, holding the ball, he can go two rails. And back and forth here. The only uh, real thing he has to guard against is just making sure he doesn't get thin on this four ball where he has to play two rails around and uh, dodge the ten ball, but really not much of a chance there that happening at this angle here. I think he can just draw one rail back out. Shot there from Fetter. He's able to get uh, 
a little bit of angle on the five so he can follow forward two rails here. And uh, once he falls on this eight, it's pretty much a done deal, um, if not already. It's a little bit straight here, so I think he'll uh, just elect to stun forward a little bit. Instead, it likes to draw back. Good shot, too. And play two rails towards the nine here, and then uh, back down for the ten, and that'll be the end of this match. Don't want to risk cursing him, but uh, somebody like Fetter is usually pretty consistent from this position. Commentators curse. Not typically much of an issue here. Makes my job a little bit easier. Claim the hot seat for Fedor Gorst. Which he knocks down. So Fedor Gorst has won the hot seat of the 10 ball mini derb open. The tally will move to the one loss side where he waits on John Gabriel 